Chester's world-famous rows have delighted and intrigued visitors for centuries and are completely unique. These quirky double-decker streets are remarkable survivors from medieval times and are at least 800 years old. The rows create continuous covered walkways inside the frontages of the city's four main streets, giving Chester its very special and distinctive character. Nowhere else has galleried shopping streets that can be traced back so far. The exact origin of the rows baffled historians, but now experts have recently started to unravel the mystery of how these two-tiered streets evolved. One big clue is Chester's Roman history. The rows actually follow the same street plan of Chester's Roman fortress, the biggest military base in Roman Britain nearly 2,000 years ago. So, could the rows have been influenced by Roman buildings? Archaeologist Caroline Pudney. To understand how the Roman buildings might have influenced the rows, I'm here to meet fellow archaeologist Dan Garner. Hi, Dan. So, Hi. here we are at the bottom of Bridge Street, in front of the rows. What would have been here some 2,000 years ago in the Roman period? We would have been standing inside the uh, legionary fortress of Diva, and on that side of the road, we'd have been looking at the frontage of the legionary fortress bathhouse, uh, which was a monumental building. The larger parts of it would have been up to 16 metres high, wow. so in excess of 50 feet. So not too far off the scale of the buildings that are already here. That's right. So it would have pretty much gone up to the steps into the Grove de Precinct up there. So about 75 to 80 metres in that direction. Yeah, yeah. A staggering 36,000 tonnes of stone, brick and tile were consumed in its construction. This massive Roman bathhouse complex included suites of hot, warm and cold rooms with running water and heated swimming pools, with innovative vaulted ceilings and superbly decorated throughout with mosaic floors and lavish paint schemes, and a huge exercise hall for troops to enjoy. The legionary fortress bathhouses of the first century AD were cutting-edge technology in the Roman world and they were all designed at keeping the military troops at, at maximum health and maximum uh, sort of fitness all the time. Okay, so you would go in there, you would exercise, you would train, maybe some weightlifting, that kind of stuff, and then afterwards you'd have a cool off yeah. and a clean and a cleanse yeah. so that you're ready to go and literally fight another day. Yeah. So presumably when the buildings eventually fell into disrepair and collapsed, they would have left a huge amount of masonry uh, to be used by people later on or, you know, what, what would they have done with all that rubble? I think because the, of the monumental size of the building, it would be difficult to move. So they just built over the top of it? Yeah. So is there anywhere in the rows that we can still see the Roman remains today? Yes, there is. And in fact, as luck would have it, we're standing right in front of it. So follow me. Oh, fantastic. Right? Yes, we do. So it's just over here. Oh, wow. It's a Roman hypercost. Right there. Yep. So these were used for underfloor heating, basically, that, weren't they? That's right. This is fantastic. This hypercost is just a tiny part of a sophisticated Roman heating system originally fed by a wood-fired furnace that produced a flow of hot air for warming the rooms, floors and walls in the giant bathhouse above. Essentially they're the leisure centres of their day really. Really pretty impressive that these are still here after 2,000 years yeah. with the rows on top and presumably there may well be other buildings along the rows that have got this kind of Roman archaeology underneath. We hope so. I mean, we don't know for sure, but there is definitely the potential for more monumental Roman building remains to be surviving. Beautifully preserved underneath the modern rows. Hopefully. So it just gives us another little part of the story, really. Amazingly, many of Chester's Roman ruins stood for over 700 years, offering masses of stone for use in later medieval buildings. And the ruins were eventually rediscovered by archaeologists from the 1860s right up to the 1960s and then demolished to pave way for new developments. So Roman ruins are part of the story, but why were the rows built in the first place? The answer lies in events in the 1200s. Two kings chose Chester as their strategic base to conquer North Wales. Medieval historian Tom Pickles picks up the story. 
Chester was already a thriving commercial city in the 13th century, but Kings Henry III and Edward I used it as the basis for campaigns into North Wales. They brought craftspeople, thousands of them from all over the kingdom, carpenters, tree fellers, diggers, stonemasons, and they invested huge amounts of money in the city. Many of the rows survived from this period, about 1250 to 1350, and it seems likely that they resulted from some of this commercial investment. Chester quickly expanded into an incredibly busy boom town, with rich merchants building big houses in the main streets, eager to sell all manner of luxuries. One essential thing for trade was an undercroft, a stone vaulted cellar like this, which is a perfect example. They could be used as secure storage, they could be used as a tavern, they could even be used as a showroom for something like wine, for instance. About 25 of these unique medieval undercrofts still survive under the rows today, and many are put to good use as shops, bars and cafes. The construction of these stone undercrofts was made all the more easy by ready access to stone, like Roman masonry or the quarries outside the city. These provided really sturdy foundations for the timber-framed buildings above. As the main street frontages filled up, the elevated passages or galleries in front of individual buildings could be linked together to create continuous walkways. And the rows were born. The rows are a complex and still unfolding story, but one thing is for certain. These extraordinary split-level streets continue to attract visitors from all over the world, who flock here for a combined heritage shopping experience that can't be bettered anywhere in Britain. If you have a special personal treasure, memory or photograph related to the rose, please feel free to share it with us on our Facebook page.